fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and this video will be part one of a two-part series covering the skinny pig drawing. So if you're interested in hearing about the planning and the steps that I take to prepare my reference photo for drawing, just keep on watching. So in this video, we are only talking about image selection, the process of cropping and adjusting your image for your drawing. So the actual drawing will take place in part two of this mini series, and that should be up next week. So basically in this video, we're going to be covering all of the pre-planning that goes into a uh, drawing and Planning is almost as important as the drawing itself because failure to put enough time into the planning stage can result in potentially you deciding that you want to rework a significant portion of your art halfway through the drawing process or you end up scrapping it all together and starting again, which would be a waste of your time and resources. So planning is probably not the most exciting thing to most people. So in general, you should put at least 15, 20 minutes into thinking about the composition of your drawing and how you're going to build your drawing from a sketch to a finished piece. On the screen here is just the home page for Pixabay and I usually like to take my own photos of animals that I plan on drawing, but in some cases that's not always possible. And royalty free sites like Pixabay are excellent databases of really high quality photos. And if you are not familiar with the term royalty free, that basically means if you want to sell your drawing or sell your painting that was made with a royalty free photo, you are allowed to do that. If it is not royalty free, you potentially will owe the original photographer some sort of payment because you're using their property in your work. So the safest thing to do is always to take your own photos but in this case where I do not have a guinea pig of my own to photograph, I am going to head over to Pixabay and look for a guinea pig photo. So on the search, I'm going to just type in guinea pig. And we see that there are five pages of guinea pig photos and they're all quite high quality. And this photo here is the one I, I ended up selecting. So let's click on it. And this skinny pig photo is under the Pixabay license. So under this specific license for this specific picture, the photographer has said that this is free for commercial use and no attribution is required. So if you show your artwork that you made with this picture, you do not need to credit the original photographer. And this green button is the free download. So when you download, you can choose which resolution you'd like to select. The more pixels are usually the better, but it is going to be a larger file size. For Larger format pictures, you will need to create a Pixabay account to download them, and that is completely free to do. But I have already downloaded the photo, so we're going to switch to my photo editing program and keep talking about the planning aspect of this drawing. So here I have my guinea pig photo I downloaded from Pixabay open in Affinity Photo. Um, if you're not familiar with Affinity Photo, it is a fairly affordable photo editing program. Um, I will have the link to 
this program and also the price listed on the screen and also down below in the description box. And so Affinity Photo is like Photoshop. If you're familiar with Photoshop, many of the shortcuts are the same but the price is just a lot more affordable. If you can tell, the skinny pig is not quite centered. So I click the crop tool and whenever you click the crop tool, it'll break up the photo into thirds. And usually the rule of thirds applies to the majority of photos where it's nice to have your object lined up within a third of your photo. So right now you can see that the right hand side of the photo is a little bit empty because most of the information is in the center and half of the left hand third section. So to center the guinea pig, I'm just going to crop it just a little bit. Press enter to crop. And if you're planning on drawing something that you plan on selling, it's nice to consider the common frame sizes. And so the sizes I offer in my shop are 5x7, 8x10, 9x12, 11x14, and 16x20 will be coming soon. So these frame sizes are easy because your potential customer will have a easier time finding a frame for it if it's a ready-made frame, so off-the-shelf frame. Um, and it's also it can also be easier for the framer who is used to working with typical or common frame sizes. So I was deciding between drawing this guinea pig as a 8 by 10 inch drawing or a 9 by 12 inch drawing. And because I wanted to get a little bit more practice on doing some grass and some details, I chose to opt for the slightly larger size, so a 9 by 12. So to make sure that my drawing is going to be size correctly to the proportions that I want. In the crop tool, I can adjust the ratio. So in the pull down menu here, you can see that there are some common sizes. The 9 by 12 is not available, so I'm going to select custom ratio and choose 9 by 12. That's a portrait, so I'm going to rotate. So it might be a little hard to see because the lines are white, but the 9 by 12 format does mean that there's going to be a little bit of blank space where the image does not cover. So it, when I press enter, you'll see that there's a border on the top and bottom. In some cases, you might have to supplement your what's missing in your photo with your imagination. So that's what I will be doing in this drawing is that I'm just going to extend part of the top and bottom of the grass to reach the edge so that my guinea pig will be pretty centered and he'll be surrounded by this really nice bright green grass background. So just so that I don't see the transparent background anymore, I'm going to just flood it with a green using the eyedropper tool. So that's basically what I think I want my guinea pig layout to be like. So you'll notice that my pictures, dimensions, or units are in pixels. So on the ruler on the top bar here and also the vertical bar here, it's in pixels. And I want to switch that to inches because that's how I'm going to set up my grid. And if you haven't watched my grid tutorial, I will have it linked up in the eye and also in the description box. But to cover it quickly, we're going to switch the dimensions to inches and then break up the 
drawing into one inch grid sections. So that will make it easier for me to translate the information from my computer screen onto my piece of paper. So to switch the dimensions, we're going to go to document, resize, document, change the unit in the pull down menu to inches. And because we've already set our ratio, I should be able to change one measurement and it will change the other measurement. And it does. So I changed the right hand side to, or the vertical dimension to nine inches. And then the width was changed to 12 inches. And resample, we'll just resample it to this new size. So now when we look at the rulers, you'll see that the top, the width is now 12 inches. The height is now nine inches. And now we're going to overlay our grid onto our drawing. Under view, grid and axis manager, we're going to click on show grid. We're going to override the automatic grid. So we'll deselect automatic grid. Spacing is correct. We want a one inch grid. For now, the divisions will be left at one. And so on the grid lines, you want the grid to be a color that will stand out from your drawing. So right here, the default has been selected as red. And that's a pretty good color because nothing in the drawing is red and red is opposite of the color wheel to green, so it stands out well on the guinea pig's body and also on the grass. You'll see that if I switched it to something like a green color, it's a little bit difficult to see. So red is a good choice in this case. So I'll close that. And so this is the layout of the guinea pig ready to go. So with this, I can start basically translating the information from my digital file here onto my piece of paper. So let's choose blue as the color I'm going to illustrate this example. But when I'm looking at my guinea pig and the important features I want to make sure I draw on my paper, I'm not going to be doing something like if we were to zoom in here, like drawing every single strand of hair because that is too much information to be focusing on at this stage. Instead, what I'm going to be focusing on is the outline. So I'm going to be focusing on just the outline of the body. And I'm also going to be looking at where the important colors are divided. So every time there's a transition from black to white, I'm going to try and draw that division. So I'm going to draw very loosely the divisions here, here, near his butt, top of his head. And the important features of this guinea pig are just going to be his ear and his eye. And so if we were to take away the picture and just look at the sketch, it's very rough, but you can tell that it is a guinea pig. Well, I hope you can tell it's a guinea pig. And then after we do the outline, the next step would just be to show the general direction of the fur. So again, we're not drawing individual hairs one by one, but we're just going to show any important direction of the guinea pig's fur. So let me hide the sketch for now. So if you're not familiar with guinea pigs, th this area right here is called a rosette. So it's basically where the guinea pig's hair will swirl outwards in like a pattern, kind of like a tornado, I would say. So in that specific area, 
there's actually a part of its skin you can see in the very center and then you'll see that this hair will swirl outwards if you look carefully. So it looks like a tiny tornado on him. So he has one rosette there. There's also a looks like a small rosette on the back side of him but all you can see is part of the hair going outwards like that and there's not there's a bit of I guess fur that's kind of sticking out here but this is not a rosette and there's also a rosette on the opposite side of his face but we can't see it so all we see is this little bit sticking out here. So the part of the guinea pig that I think gives it the most personality is going to be the main rosette that we see right here. So whenever we color an animal that has an important feature, so it could be a spot on its nose, a spot near its eye, something that really differentiates the animal from its other breed family members, you want to make sure that you treat that feature with a little bit more care because that is the feature that probably his or her owner is also very attached to. So whenever you draw, it's important to draw with a level of sensitivity because every animal is unique and you definitely don't want to ignore something that makes that animal special. Putting those two things together, so the outline and the fur direction, that is what my sketch will look like. And I'm going to just overlay a picture of the sketch itself so you can see what it looked like after I spent about one or two hours on just the sketch. The next part I want to go over is how I'm going to approach the coloring. So we have the sketch or the drawing done and that's going to help guide us on color placement for the base layer and also general fur direction. But because this guinea pig is a little bit unique because its fur color is very distinct between its sections, there is also something that I think you may not have considered that is important to point out. So let's talk about the coloring of the guinea pig. So black and white are obviously the most extreme ends of the value or the light and darkness you can have on an animal. Having a black and white guinea pig is going to be a little bit more difficult than let's say a solid color guinea pig like this guy on the screen here. And the reason why this is going to get a little bit tricky is because in these areas right here where the black and white meet about 20 percent of its body you're going to be dealing with the interface of what the black and white fur and pastels are good in the sense that you can achieve dark values very quickly but it's also not good in the sense that you can have inadvertent color mixing. So in these three areas where the black and white fur will overlap, if you don't plan when you use the black and white ahead, you're going to end up with areas that are gray instead of distinctly black and white. So we're going to zoom in just on this part I'd like to call the Oreo area. So there's black on this side, black on this side and white in the middle band here and if you look at the direction of the fur it's going to follow a pattern and that pattern is that the hair follicle where it starts on the guinea pig skin starts on the right hand side and the end of the hair will be on the left hand side so the hair goes in one basic general direction of starting on the right, ending on the left, and that's going to help guide us how we approach coloring this guinea pig. So if you take a look at 
individual hair follicles. So you can see some of these hairs individually. So it starts on the right, ends on the left. It starts on the right, ends on the left. And where it ends on the left is going to be not exactly horizontal. It's going to curve slightly up or down, but the hair does follow this pattern. And so when you're coloring or drawing any animal, you do have to pay attention to hair direction because it's going to inform you on how you're going to color your animal. So what that means is that I want my final detail layer to have the pattern where I am adding detail from the right hand side of the body of the guinea pig and finishing off with the left hand side of the body. I lighten the image just a little bit so you can see the arrows I'm going to talk about. But for the Oreo band area, when I'm coloring what you're going to find is that I'm going to be coloring slowly and having the black approach the white and have the white approach the black slowly. And to finish off that border, I'm going to have the last actions I take be to create those hair marks so that the final details that the user sees is going to be the white on top of the black. And so that will make it look like the layer of hair on the guinea pig makes sense. So in a different case, let's move over. So I'll have the white approach the black, the black approach the white, and then on my final layer, I'm going to have the black overlap the white. So the black will be the last detail laying on top of the white. And same thing for his butt area. I'm going to have the white approach the black, black approach the white, and the last actions I take on the border will be the black for overlapping the white. Because if you start closing in on the fur too early, you're going to get what's called color muddying. So your white and black are going to end up mixing and you're going to end up with a medium gray value that you don't want. And it's not going to look like a black and white guinea pig anymore. It's going to look like a black, white, and gray guinea pig. So that is all the tips I have in my guinea pig pre-planning video. And next week's video will be featuring the actual drawing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I will link a playlist of my previous drawing time-lapse tutorials down below if you're interested in seeing the tutorials I have already up. Again, stay tuned for the full drawing time-lapse tutorial of the skinny pig that will be posted next week, Tuesday. So if you're not subscribed and you'd like to be subscribed, um, hit the subscribe button. And if you turn on your notifications, YouTube will send you an email telling you when this tutorial will be up. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.